I landed directly in the heart of the slaughter. As soon as my feet touched the ground, several bullets whistled past me. I somersaulted and disappeared behind a barricade. I examined myself. There were piles of lifeless bodies. Through the cacophony of gunfire and shouts, I could hear short orders coming from everywhere. I was confused and couldn't figure out what to do. Suddenly, someone grabbed my hand and shouted at me to join the others to move forward. Somebody else ordered to cover another soldier who ran to the embrasure who was cursing loudly without removing his finger off the trigger. And I wanted to help him. I'm ready. But as soon as I left the hideout, I saw him fall to his knees, riddled with bullets. And I took cover again. I was confused again, scared again. I closed my eyes and took a few deep breaths. The screams and clatter of the rattling weapons receded as if the sound on the TV had been turned down. But through the ringing in my ears, I could hear a groan, quiet at first, but growing louder by the minute. I opened my eyes and looked around. Unable to take cover, a soldier was lying on the ground, pressing a bleeding wound on his leg. It's dangerous to go out to get him. It's an open field and I'll be exposed. What to do then? Stay in place, help him. I would say we will help him. Because it's only a wound on his leg. Like he can survive from that. He can heal. I love the red hair I gave me. <laughs> I love the hair I gave myself. The man tried to crawl. Tried to escape from death's grip. But death has already grabbed onto him with its long claws. The soldier looked at me, held out his hand, and his lips whispered a prayer. If I don't help him, he'll die. I pressed myself to the ground and crawled towards the soldier. Hold on! But the sound of my voice got swallowed by the bed lamb around us. Yet the soldier saw me approaching and a glimpse of hope flashed in his eyes. His bloody, trembling fingers grabbed my arm. Come on! I managed to get him to the barricades. Let's go. You saved a soldier. Let's go. Once we were relatively safe, the pain and the stress caught up with him and drained the last of his strength. But he was alive. Let's go. The carnage continued. I didn't want to take part in this battle, but Gerald's message was loud and clear. You become a part of the war whether you want it or not. This is what Gerald was trying to teach us. The war will swallow you whole, and there's no escape. Therefore, you need to learn its rules beforehand. Like, literally what I explained. <laughs> like I said, you didn't miss much. Explosion, shooting, chasing. The barricade was left somewhere far behind. Path of the demon, damn. I ran forward screaming, killing everyone who got in my way. Damn. <laughs> we don't have to be like that. I lost count of how many people were killed by my demonic hand. <laughs> this is literally extreme. <laughs> no mercy. This is literally extreme. Those who want my death will get theirs. Damn. I mean. You only get what you did. Like. Same with same. You tried to murder me, and you got murdered instead. <laughs> I tur I just turned around. <laughs> I just uh, turned around the stick. My hands were covered in blood. I got them dirty in the name of something bigger than me. I realized there are many ways to feel about death, and sometimes to survive, you have to take someone else's life. I took a swing over the body of my opponent, but my hand was stopped in midair. Thank you. Thank you, Dino. Please stop that crazy woman. What are you doing? Weird question. We're at a war. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Girl, this isn't our war. So what? Am I supposed to get killed without fighting back? He let go of my hand, ignoring the flying bullets. As if we weren't in the middle of a war, but taking a stroll through the park. With every kill, you raise the value of your life. But is your life really that precious? Sir, I don't know if I agree with what you're saying right now. You're talking as someone with low self-esteem. Every single life is meaningful. 
no life is worth more or less. Okay? I don't think that some life is less worth than mine. And I don't think that a life is more worth it than mine. Like, we all deserve to live. And we all have the same worthiness. Like, we all have the same emotion. Like... None of us has a more right to live than someone else. I thought about his words and answered. It's priceless up until the moment it's taken away. <laughs> Damn. Dino nodded, but it was clear he has another point of view. Don't judge me. You have no right to judge me. Bullets whistled past us, but none of them found their target. Is this our first fight as a couple? I don't blame those who think differently. And I'm not trying to change your mind. I love the way that he's just so understanding and he just accepts the opinion. He literally sometimes reminds me of Stefan Salvatore from TVD, you know. But don't go blind with cruelty. It doesn't suit even a demon. Damn, that. Watch out. He pushed me away, saving me from another bullet. Dino? But he disappeared among the muddy, flicking fingers. The figures of other soldiers. That's what you get for being such a bitch. And once more, the war took us into the thick of things. That's what you get for being a bitch. I ran without understanding where I was running to and who was nearby. The soldiers fell and didn't ri rise to their feet. Someone grabbed my leg. A soldier was lying on the ground. His dry lips whispered water. He needs help. I looked at him. But he, he won't survive. The wound in his belly left him no chance. And yet he continued to cling to life desperately like an animal. Damn. He wanted to live. Oh, Sifa, he wanted to live so much. I ducked, but the air seemed to be riddled with bullets. Drag him to cover. He's going to die either way. Like, this sounds so wrong to do. But literally, he's going to die either way. Literally, if the wound in his belly is so deep that we think that he's not going to survive, it won't matter if we sacrifice our life. We're only gonna die with him. It all would have been in vain. I didn't risk my life. The soldier has one foot in the grave. He'll die anyway. I stepped over him, somersaulted to the side and took cover. The carnage was rough. It seemed that this war would never end. I almost forgot that all this is just a lesson. That my home isn't here, not on earth. And the body of the soldier is in my body. But soon everything began to fade away. I woke up in the vortex. My head was spinning and my body was trembling. Many students, just like me, looked around. Confused, tired and slightly frightened. Welcome home. Let's go back to the auditorium. I was barely dragging my legs. I didn't even look where I was going. I fixed my eyes on the teacher's shoes. Gerald sat down, threw his feet on the table and looked around the auditorium. Well, I watched each of you and let me tell you this. He evaluated many students before reaching me. What about you, Simona? You did everything right. The first soldier needed real help. You gave it. The second one was doomed. What lesson can be drawn from this? That you can't save everyone. Sometimes sacrifices are useless. Foolish altruism will not bring us victory. But without help, when it is needed, we will not succeed. It is imperative to be able to make the right call when everything around seems insane. Any more questions? Gerald got up from the table. If there are no more questions, you are free to go. He collected his books and left the auditorium. Whoop. I was sitting on a stone. A leftover piece of a gazebo. A gazebo, sorry. Most of the things in the academy were nothing but pieces. A pieces of memory, a piece of hope. A piece of pain letting itself known all the time. Broken bones and open wounds healed. But for some reason, everyone was still in pain. I felt a strength inside me that was tearing me apart. It was the power accidentally gifted to me by Malbante. 
I nervously clenched and unclenched my fingers and rubbed my skin until it was red. I tried to force myself to get up and start training, but the fear of this unknown power choked me with indecision. You, you did it. What did I do? Free me. I looked around shyly, as if my thoughts were broadcasted, broadcast to everyone. I haven't spoken to fire since then. To loyal. To loy. <laughs> human to human. Maybe I should train with him. No, 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 uh, 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 this is dino version, this is dino version. I want to train with someone else. Who should I train with? Dino, dino, dino version. Dino was training others when I approached him. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Could you help me with something? Dino addressed the students. Repeat this until you get it right. The key to any success is to be stubborn and not give up. That. He took me by the elbow and led me aside. What's wrong? Does something happen? After the ritual, I gained this power. I can feel it. But I don't know how to deal with it, how to tame it. The expression on his face changed. It became rigid, severe. Do you want me to fix my father's mistakes? Sir! I want you to train with me. What? No, I didn't mean it like that. He sighed heavily. I'm sorry you had to endure all this because of him. I'm really very... That's not your fault. I touched his chin and gently turned his face towards me. You've got nothing to apologize for, Dino. You're not to blame. <clears throat> but I am. Back then at the hotel, I recognized my father's aura, but I didn't want to believe it. Honey, it seems so absurd that I immediately forgot about it as if never happened. I won't make that mistake again. He grabbed my shoulders demandingly and desperately looked into my eyes. I promise I won't let anyone else hurt you anymore. And if father threatens you, I, I will kill him. No, you won't. And you don't have to. Honey... If you want to protect someone, you don't only protect the exterior, you also protect the inside. I wouldn't love you with a pure love if I would want you to kill your father in order to protect me. I want you to be by my side. I don't want you to feel like you have to do something that you're not ready for. You said it in the first episode of this season. You can't hate him because he's your father and it's okay. You, it, he is your father, so you can't hate him. And I don't want you to feel like you have to kill him. Dino, honor is more important than blood. It depends on what you think is honor. I don't know if I think it's honorable to kill someone just to protect someone else. I just want that person to be by my side. To help me through the worst moments of my life. I don't want you to kill someone just because you're scared that they would come after me. He hugged me tightly and quietly repeated, Honor is more important than blood. Yeah, keep on telling yourself that perhaps sooner or later you will believe it. Honestly, I feel so bad for Dino. I really, really do. Like he loves with a pure love. And even though his father like only screwed him up, he loves him so much. I pressed against his neck. I felt calm and warm in his arms, as I've always had. Dino carefully pulled away from me, cleared his throat and said, About your power, you always have to understand why you need it. And why you're going to use it at one point or another. 
Having a clear sense of purpose will help you control your strength. Dana rolled up his sleeves, took a few steps back, and slightly bent forward, as if he was going to wrestle me. Try to throw me away with a wave. What if I fail? Or if I overdo it? Don't be afraid. No, I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> I closed my eyes and imagined pushing the angel slightly away. I stretched out my arms and directed the energy at Dino. <clears throat> Dino staggered backwards as if pushed by a strong gush of wind. Damn, not bad, but maybe a little stronger this time. <sighs> I'll try. I need to push Dino away so that he falls, so that he falls. Dino was thrown so far that he fell down but spread his wings in time to avoid hitting the ground. When he came back a little shabby and surprised, I immediately clung to him. Dino, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not the sad face. That's okay. By any chance your goal wasn't to kill me, was it? Damn! I need to be more precise with my attentions. The important thing is you shouldn't be afraid to use your powers. You know the problem here? It's not our power. It's Malbonte's power. We have his power inside of us. It's not ours to begin with. So I don't know if we shouldn't be afraid to use them. They're not ours. Remember that you own the power, not the other way around. Dino looked nostalgically at the training students. Is everything okay? He smiled encouragingly and pulled me towards him. With you next to me, everything is always okay. Aww. Just okay? It should be awesome. <laughs> the arrogance. He laughed. He looked into each of my eyes. Uh, he looked into my eyes as if he was trying to discern something in them, but couldn't. During the war, I was worried for many, but not for you. I don't know why. It was as if I was sure that you could handle it. You're not the type to stand on the sidelines or hide in a building. Rather, you're one of those who go on a rampage, but always come through okay. Yeah, yeah. So that we can suffer even more <laughs> after that. Yeah, yeah. I believe in you, Zimona. Aww. But please be careful. Be careful. You only stand your, with your back to those you trust. But a knife in the back is the most painful. I saw pain and sadness in his gaze and fear for me. Promise me you'll be careful. I promise. I buried my face in his chest and we stood like that for a while. No. Then he reluctantly pulled away and nodded his head towards the students with a guilty smile. This isn't the time to worry about the law of segregation. But we shouldn't cross the line. Oh, it's the right of Stainus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the right of Stino. Whatever you say. He lightly moved his finger across my face, lingering on my lips for a few seconds. Go on then. You already gave up on the law of segregation, sir. Oh no, not that backflash. I remember that backflash literally as if it was imprinted in my brain. Oh, no, my body. <laughs> An icy wind blew chaotically in all directions. I shivered and looked around. Where am I? I tried to remember how I got here, but I couldn't. Oh. No. Huh? I saw an unfamiliar face of angels and demons standing around the child Malbante. Calm down, we will not harm you. They cautiously approached him, but he backed away, continuing to shout, No. His scream sent a wave of energy that swept away half of the immortals. Exactly. Back the fuck off. Some of them didn't get up. Huh? Stop it. We will not harm you. I took a few more steps towards him, but Malbanti screamed in rage again. Yeah, he says to back the fuck up. Back the fuck up. No. Huh? I instinctively covered my ears. No. The immortals did the same, but it didn't help them. One by one, they began to fall to their knees and then to their sides or on their backs and no longer moved. The cry of the child killed them. 
Exactly. Shut the fuck up. Let's go. <laughs> People, I'm horrible. <laughs> I'm horrible. A dozen dead faces contorted from fear or of death were frozen before my eyes. He killed them all. I looked at Nalbante. Oh, He was breathing heavily, gasping for air, and his shoulders moved quickly up and down. He was so scared. Touch him and calm him down, stay aside. Honestly, I would try to do that. Touch him and calm him down. But, but, I know myself, the more romantic choices I can play with Malbanti, the more choices I will want to do. And I'm already <laughs> in the third season with my baby dino. I can't. I can't, even though I want to. I'm so sorry. I'm get like I said, the second version I'm gonna play is Malbanti, so stay aside. I silently watched the little boy left alone among the piles of dead killed by his hatred. He looked with surprise at the corpses of the immortals, as if he had nothing to do with them. He was like a child stepping on a cockroach, suddenly surprised that the cockroach no longer moved. And then I began to distance myself from the vision, from my Bonte. Soon my Bonte turned into a distant image somewhere on the horizon and then completely faded into darkness. How is it possible that we see his past? <gasps> Night. Silence. I was laying in bed, trapped in my own blanket. It was a dream. A vision. My heart was pounding anxiously in my chest. I was trembling, unable to calm down. I pressed my back against the wall, wrapped my arms around my knees, and stared blankly at a random point in the room. It was a sort of meditation. Mimi snoring in the background helped me calm down. <laughs> Mimi. I wanted to lie back, but a shadow flickered in the corner. Huh? The shadow stepped away from the wardrobe and I could see someone's silhouette. I raised my torso up and peered into the darkness. Suddenly the shadow moved quickly and pounced on me. <gasps> someone covered my mouth. I could feel the smell of pine trees and river coming from the big harsh palm. The smell seemed so out of place that I opened my eyes. <laughs> No, 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 no. Dino version, dino version, dino version. Who? Hmm? Why do I see your life? Ooh! So we don't only see his life. He sees ours as well. Damn! Now that's fucked up. Why are you sending me these visions? Ooh! Uh, sir, sir, I'm not sending you anything. Why are you sending me these visions? He pushed me into the pillow, covering my mouth even harder. Sir! I started to choke. Hmm? You took my powers. I looked into his demanding eyes. There was a lot of hatred in them, but there was something else too. I was paralyzed with fear and couldn't see past the only thought in my head. He's going to kill me. For a moment, this seemed to be his only desire, but he suddenly shuddered, pulled away from me as if burned, and rushed back into the darkness. Hmm. <gasps> Night. Silence. I was laying in bed trapped in my own blanket. Two visions? Malbanti wasn't here, was he? Honestly, I believe that he has the power to send you these visions. Or it's a fear of yours. I cautiously walked around the room. Everything is exactly as it was. Weird. Mimi was sleeping. Lucky her. Nothing disturbs her to sleep. <laughs> I went back to bed. I stared at the corner for a long time, as if expecting a shadow to reappear again. Fuck this. <laughs> I pulled the blanket over my head. Same. And I fell asleep safely, guarded by it. Ooh, in the morning, mom called me to the student council hall. I was the last to come. Gerald, Miss Alina, Demon Mammon, and even Crowley and Lilu were already sitting at the table. Seraph Crowley didn't look good, but way better than a week ago. When I entered, mom turned to me with a severe expression on her face. Come in, sit down. 
There are almost no immortals left at school who can be trusted. Damn. But as you know, we have a rat among us. That's probably one of the angels' demons. Hmm. At this point, I trust the angels to do anything. <laughs> Leela indignantly straightened her back. Why is that? The angels crave power more than anyone else. Damn! That's not true. Whoever it is, I've gathered here those I can trust. What an honor. What's wrong, Rebecca? Mom sat down at the table. I wanted to check all the books and important amulets that are kept in the academy. We've discovered that the amulet to cloak one's energy was missing. Fanzio had one. Yes, but he... I believe it was Fanzio. Stole an amulet stronger than his own. It must be for Malbanti, so let's see if I doesn't find him. But can his amulet cope with Malbanti's energy? I doubt that. So they need the amulet for something else. Mom brought her palms together as if in prayer and pressed them to her lips. We do not yet know what exactly Malbanti's plans are. Yes, and that's the problem. We cannot predict his future actions. Miss Elena raised her hand and in a calm, smooth voice said, what about the Citadel? Will they help us? Mom answered sharply, as if making it clear that this is beyond doubt. No. The school is entirely autonomous. Damn. Now we are on our own, without supervision, but also without help. Rebecca, were you kicked out of the council? How did you allow it? I prioritized. Ooh! Mammon bowed his head, showing respect. Among other things, we have other problems. Mom, Mom hesitated. Recently, we've sent soldiers to get pre provisions, but they never came back. There is no more food. We need to send a team again, but there is no one left. Only Andy and a couple of guys volunteered. This isn't enough. I'll go. Out of the question. You said yourself that there is no one else. Mom was silent. Simona, are you sure you can handle it? I will try. I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> glory. Pride flashed in my mother's eyes. We do not do things if we're not sure that we can handle them. If you're sure, then I don't doubt you, daughter. She got up from the table. It's decided. Simona will go along with the rest of the team to get some provisions. We're done for the day. Leaving the council room, I had premonition. Nice. I couldn't tell if it was good or bad, but one thing I knew for sure. Something is gonna happen. Yes. I had to get up in the morning. The flying division always takes off with the first rays of the sun. Andy was in charge of the team. He gave short orders and supervised as the empty containers were loaded onto wooden platforms. Four soldiers grabbed the rope and soared up, carrying the load with them. Where do you get food? It's a food every time. Sometimes hunters join us. They catch the prey. But usually the citadel leaves the food in a pre-established place. We know a few places where the food was never collected. But we can't get there yet. And you noticed that the soldiers with the cargo were ready up in the sky. He whistled, swirled his hand in the air and shouted, It's time. Okay, let's go. And he flew first in line. I followed him on fire's back. The road was long. At first, excitement bubbled inside, but it gradually subsided. The long road is exhausting, but it's not so scary. I was looking around at the sky, the cliffs, the treetops. All of a sudden, I got jumped from one side. Oh no! Everything started spinning, but I noticed the other soldiers getting kidnapped. Huh? I tried to break out of someone's tight grip, but they put a back on my head and tied my hands. Nice! Let's do this, Malbonte. <laughs> I didn't know where they were taking us or what would happen. I only felt like I was thrown into an empty food container. Damn! Not an empty food container! Andy wanted to talk to me, but he was told to be silent, and someone hit him. Damn! Where are they taking us? What do they want from us? Being left in the dark is the worst. After an infinitely long time, we were unloaded and brought to our knees. Our kidnappers talked among themselves, but their conversation was cut short. 
Someone's calm steps were heard, and they stopped next to me. I touched the shoes with my toes, hoping it would be enough for me to recognize the person sitting near me. Are you kidding me? I heard a chuckle. <laughs> Literally, like, how the fuck are you supposed to recognize someone by their shoes? Not every, uh, not everyone. <sighs> nobody, literally nobody, wears the same shoes literally all the time. The kidnapper was amused by my attempt. <laughs> the same, swoosh. The back was ripped off my head. How's it going? My bonte looked down at me. Mm. Don't think you are more powerful just because you're taller. Uh Uh-huh. He grinned, but his grin changed to surprise as if he hadn't expected to see me. Are you... Are you... I wouldn't say that he was surprised because he didn't expect to see us. I would say he was surprised. Hmm. I don't even know. I just don't think he was surprised. I think he just expected us to be there. He squatted so that our faces were almost level and he quietly calmly said, Are you shitting me? Welcome to my underground camp. You are such a bitch. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Let's go. Okay. That was it for today. (laughs) I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.